On February 26th, 2022, I drove three hours south of Baltimore to historic Leonardtown in St. Mary's County, Maryland for Mall Dyer Day. It was just like many small town festivals with live music, people in costumes, specialty drinks at local bars and restaurants, and families and kids roaming about on a scavenger hunt. But this event honors a witch, or a woman accused of being a witch, who in 1697 was chased out of her tiny home after it was set aflame by the people in her village on a bitter winter evening. A witch who, fearing for her life and having no place to go, froze to death on a rock with one hand pointed to the heavens, calling down a bitter curse on those who murdered her. That 875-pound rock, Maul Dyer rock, with the imprint of her frozen hand and knee on its surface, now sits in a special place of honor in Leonardtown, outside of historic Tudor Hall. The folklore says Maul Dyer came from the old country to settle in Maryland. She became known as a healer in her small village, practicing herbal medicine, and preferred the company of the local indigenous people with whom she traded healing wisdom to her own. She was physically unattractive, so ugly it hurt, one colonist wrote in a letter, and preferred to live alone, away from the rest of her village. A two-year drought began in 1695 and decimated the village's crops and livestock. It was followed by a brutal, record-cold winter and an outbreak of deadly disease, probably flu. The villagers looked for a cause of their horrible misfortune, and as was sadly common in that era, fingers naturally pointed to the lonely old woman and convenient scapegoat, the witch Maul Dyer. The villagers carried pine-pitched torches and weapons through the cold night to Maul's hut. They set it ablaze and she managed to flee as it burned to the ground, disappearing into the freezing darkness. A few days later, a child looking for his family's lost cow found Maul Dyer's corpse frozen on a boulder, one arm outstretched to the sky. When her body was removed, her hand and knee had mysteriously left indentations in the rock. Since then, many stories about the strange and unsettling powers of the Maldire rock have been shared among locals and written about in the press. People are afraid to touch it because of its reputed bad luck, the remnants of her dying curse. That's the legend, but is there any truth? Author and historian Lynn J. Buonviri's meticulous research is recounted in her book, Maul Dyer and Other Witch Tales of Southern Maryland. She discovered there was, in fact, a Mary Dyer in the county records. Maul is a term of endearment for Mary. She was born in Devon, England, and fled the English Civil War to the West Indies as a poor indentured servant in 1669. As a servant on a sugar plantation for eight years, it's very likely she learned of the magical traditions and herbal medicine of the enslaved Africans who worked beside her. Mole, 43 years old and unmarried, then sailed to the Maryland colonies in 1677, where she settled alone on a small piece of land. Practicing magic and herbal healing or witchcraft was considered fine, as long as it didn't harm anyone or involve the devil. So it's likely Mole was consulted for her services. Until those years of drought and that horrific winter when the people she had helped turned against her. In 1968, the rock was located by the St. Mary's Historical Society, and in 1972, it was moved to a prominent location in Leonardtown. Maul Dyer, I learned, is one of the inspirations for the Blair Witch Project. I took a trip to Maul Dyer Road, where her ghost has been sighted, and a spectral white dog is alleged to cause traffic accidents. I visited Maul Dyer Run when I was there, a peaceful gurgling stream that bears her name. But the no trespassing signs unnerved me more than any spiritual presence and kept me from wandering deeper into Maul Dyer's legendary woods. Of course I touched the rock. Of course I did. Is there a palpable energy? It certainly seemed so. It felt powerful even alive with a very real presence. 
or it may have been my imagination. But does dismissing it as that downplay the power of the imagination to bring a legend to manifestation? Maybe the legend is simply that, a folktale. Maybe Moldire wasn't a witch and didn't die frozen to that rock. Maybe it's just an ordinary rock that became associated with the legend over hundreds of years as the myth spread and grew. But can our collective imaginations imbue an 875-pound boulder with a life of its own? Most of the world's major religions recognize physical objects of reputed spiritual power, after all. Relics of Catholic saints, sacred temples, the Black Stone of Mecca. Why not Maldire Rock? Could it become a gathering place for witches to reclaim their power against oppression and prejudice? Is the rock drawing us to its spiritual power, or are we giving it power? And I did have one very odd experience. My iPhone gimbal completely failed each time I tried to use it around the rock. It had never malfunctioned before. Hmm. You can visit Mall Dyer Rock in Leonardtown, Maryland year-round or on her special day, February 26th. You can even raise a glass of Mall Dyer Cinnamon Whiskey in her honor. And if you do, please tell her I sent you. Thank you for joining me on this magical journey. If you like this sort of thing, please subscribe. See you next time.